Hello students, welcome and thank you for joining me as we examine a way to estimate ending inventory using the gross profit method oh, with a tweak from the way your author did it. The author uses the formula as shown in the illustration 9.5 to estimate the value of ending inventory using the gross profit method. I'd like to tweak that formula a little bit. We're going to get the same answer, but we'll use a different format. It's one that you've used in several of your classes that you know off by heart that we used in the last chapter and you're familiar with. In short, you're not going to have to memorize anything new. I just want you to utilize what you already know how to do. So what we're going to do is use his information, and he provided everything that's in red, and the problem also provided a gross profit rate. And I'm going to use an income statement, net sales less cost of goods sold equals gross profit, and his gross profit rate and the basic cost of goods sold formula to calculate ending inventory. And that formula we practiced in our last chapter for periodic inventory. Beginning inventory plus your purchases equals total available minus your ending inventory, that number we're looking for, equals cost of goods sold. So we're going to use what we already know and the numbers he provided to estimate ending inventory. His estimate came up with 900,000, but it was in a foreign fashion, and you'd have to memorize how to do that. Let's learn and use what we already know. So, since an income statement start, starts with sales, let's start with that. It's always a good place to start. Net sales are $2 million. So we'll go ahead and record that on our income statement. Now let's move to the cost of goods sold calculation. First, you start with beginning inventory. Beginning inventory is $600,000, so we'll list that next. Get that from our accounting records. We also know from our accounting records that our purchases for the period were 1500000 So I'll list that next. We'll use that. Beginning inventory plus purchases equals the total available for sale. In our case, 2100000 total goods available for sale. Now you know from basic cost of goods sold calculations that goods available for sale, whoops, sorry about that, minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold. So we've utilized the numbers he's given us. We have one more that we can utilize, and that's the gross profit rate. The gross profit rate is based on sales. So sales is 100%, and we know from our accounting records in recent times that gross profit's been running 40%. So given that we know that, we can use our accounting records to estimate what our current gross profit would be. 40% of 2 million is 800,000. So we know that a pretty good estimate of our gross profit for the period based on the reliability of our gross profit rate would be about 800,000. We also know that sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. And if you know sales are 2 million and gross profit, you can calculate what cost of goods sold would be. 2 million minus some number equals 800,000 and you can tell by looking or by doing the math that that number would be 1,200,000. So using our method of estimating, we know that cost of goods sold runs about 1,200,000. I'm going to bring that number over here so I think it will help you follow the calculation over here just a little bit too. Let's return to our basic cost of goods sold calculation. Beginning inventory plus purchases equals total available minus ending any ending inventory, that which we're trying to estimate, equals 1,200,000. What can you subtract from 2,100,000 that will give you 1,200,000? And the answer to that is 900,000. And so, using our adjusted format, we have come up with an estimate 
for ending inventory using formats that are familiar to us that matches the author's estimate for ending inventory. Pretty slick, huh? An income statement, cost of goods sold, gross profit ratio, and we were good to go. There is one consideration I'd like to bring up to you right now, and that is using the gross profit rate in the way that we have assumes that gross profit is calculated on a percent of sales. And sometimes that isn't the case. So let's scroll down a little bit. Here we go. Sometimes we have, as in our example above, gross profit stated as a percent of sales. And I'm going to call that markup on sales. But sometimes we know what gross profit is stated as a percent of cost. We'll call that markup on cost. If you want to estimate ending inventory using the gross profit method, you must use the markup on sales approach. So we need to come up with a way to convert markup on cost to markup on sales. And here is a formula that will do just that for you. So let's use an example. Let's say you know your markup on cost is 66.67%. Let's run that through our formula and see if we can turn it in to a markup on sales. So we'll take 0.6667, which is writing out 66.67%. Go away. Sorry. And add 1 to that number and divide it out, 1.6667. And when you do that, that comes up to 40%. So it's a real simple conversion to take a markup on cost to a markup on sales. And once you know the markup on sales, you can use that to complete the estimate of ending inventory using the gross profit method. So thanks for joining me in this video of how to estimate ending inventory using the gross profit method hopefully in a way that's going to be easy for you to remember. Let's move on and learn another method to estimate ending inventory. Talk to you soon.